Hi, this is Adam Shibley, and you're listening to Business Minds Coffee Chat with Jay Shear. Jay. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Business Consultant. Jay Shear. Jay Shear Business Consulting. Welcome. I'm Jay Shear with Jay Shear Business Consulting. We build solid foundations for service-based businesses to grow and scale and achieve the results and success they deserve. And you've joined Business Minds Coffee Chat. What does it take to create personal transformation from the inside out and help an entire town do the same? Well, stay tuned to find out. Our guest is a husband and father, fitness entrepreneur, a full-time podcast host of two top-ranked podcasts, a health coach, author, and speaker. He went from weighing 327 pounds and experiencing weight-related health issues in his late 20s to shifting his mindset, lifestyle, and fitness and losing over 100 pounds. He's on a mission to inspire over 1 million pounds of healthy results through his podcast, online community, and coaching programs. Please welcome the PhD, previous heavy dude, Adam Shibley. Adam, thanks so much for being here. It's great to see you. Jay, man, I'm a big fan of what you're doing here on the show. And I can't wait to dive in, man. I'm, I'm so honored when people like you are like, hey, I want to share my platform with you. So I'm feeling the pressure, but I feel like I'm going to deliver. So I want your audience to buckle up. We're going to bring the energy. Oh, I love it. Well, there you go. Well, let's dig right in because I, like you, I've been super excited to have you on the show for a number of reasons. And we're going to be talking about several of those as the conversation starts to unfold here. But I think what's really important, Adam, is for you to share part of your backstory because there's a lot of growth that has happened that brings you up to who you are today and what you're doing today. And I just barely scratched the surface in that intro. So share with us that thumbnail sketch. And while you're doing that, could you also tell us something that you believed about yourself early on that you discovered wasn't true? Yeah, well, my 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 transformative journey starts back in 2007. That's, as you mentioned, uh, the whole PhD. If, if I'm a previously heavy dude now, at some point I was a heavy dude. And that's back in 2007 when I weighed 327 pounds. And I was kind of at that bottom of the barrel of life, that rock bottom moment where not only did I have weight issues, I had relationship issues and self-confidence issues and money issues. I had a ton of credit card debt. I was just doing a lot of dumb things with my life because I was a 25 year old guy. And that's kind of what 25 year old guys do sometimes. So I was not investing in myself in any sort of way, but I had something that kept happening in my life. This, this DVD back in the, the age of DVDs called the law of attraction, the secret kept on popping up into my life. And I had one friend like, hey, I think you need to watch this. And I pretended to watch it. So I was like, I don't need this. And I give it back. Oh, great. That was awesome. And then another friend did. And I let it sit. And I remember in 2007, I'd gone to the grocery and I was like, I hope I have enough money on this credit card to be able to pay for my groceries. Like that sort of thing kind of like clinched up. Oh, it ran through. Okay, cool. And I just remember going home and seeing that DVD sitting there. There was dust on top of it. And I was like, what do I have to lose? What is, I don't know what this is about, but for some reason, I feel like I need to watch this. And that was my first ever dose of personal growth material. Hmm. Like the only thing I ever read was like the, the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. And that wasn't helping a whole lot. So, <laughs> the, so like it made me feel for the first time, maybe in forever, that I could control my life. It, I had felt like at that point I was in a car with my foot pedal to the metal with my hands off the steering wheel. And at that point, I saw that I could grab the steering wheel and try to steer the car in the direction that I wanted it to go. And that gave me hope, that gave me confidence. And I was like, okay, I need to take personal responsibility. And that's that was a big light bulb moment for me. Up until that point, I felt like all these external circumstances were 
the reason why I was overweight, the reason why my relationships weren't where they want, they should be where, you know, why my, my career wasn't going the direction that it wanted to. And I realized that I needed to take personal responsibility and personal control over my situation. So long story short, that night I sat down and I wrote out what I now define and what I teach as my lifestyle rehabilitation statement. It's a list of affirmations. Okay. And I placed my order with what I wanted to create in my life, but I also committed not only to just attraction, but action. You can't spell attraction without action. So I was like, I can't just sit in my basement and hope, think myself thin. Like, I know that's not going to work. I got to get up and get my butt moving. I know this mountain of debt isn't going to solve itself. I've got to look for opportunity, but I've got to program my, my mind with what I want and then go after it on a daily basis. So for five years, 2000, July 2007 to July 2012, I committed to reading my lifestyle rehabilitation statement out loud with energy and feeling it every morning, every night, every morning to set the tone for the day, every night for accountability. <laughs> if I didn't do something by the end of the day, when I read that statement to move the needle at least 1% in one direction, not like solve everything all at once, but just one thing. If I didn't do at least one thing, I had to do it before I went to bed. That was the rule. So every day, just 1%. I'm, I'm picking up the ax and I'm taking a swing. Some days I miss, some days I connect, some days results are better than others. So I did that for five years. In that five years of implementation, I lose 100 pounds. Um, people started asking me how I lost the weight. I started helping other people lose weight. 2009 is about when the boot camp craze really took off. So I started helping other people. I helped another person lose 100 pounds. Then another I ended up helping 15 people in my hometown lose over 100 pounds. Wow. That turned into a boot camp business. That turned into me five years later having 30 employees, 500 clients, an 8,000 square foot facility. And we had helped the hometown lose over 35,000 pounds and crushing it from a business perspective, fell in love, got married, got rid of all my debt, started a family, self-confidence through the roof. And, you know, you talk about like something that I learned or something that, that I didn't know then that I know now, it's like that moment of taking personal responsibility and, you know, being a fitness guy, everybody's like, what's the most important exercise that you can do? And I always hit them with this. I go, you got to take the finger of blame and you got to turn around and take ownership Ooh. and you got to, you got to quit doing this and, and do a little bit, not blame yourself, but take personal responsibility. That was the big ignition switch that hit for me. And that started the whole journey. Like the whole, if it's to be, it's up to me thing. Yeah. Like that, that was big. So that's, that's kind of the big picture of, of the transformative journey of the now PhD. Wow. That's what, what, what an amazing transformational story. And what, what I really love about it, well, there's multiple aspects to it, but the action component, the piece where there was a catalyst, you know, there was a, there was the, that something that resonated with you enough, got you to a point where you said, I have to do something different. And whether it was a book, and in your case, it was watching that DVD with a message that resonated with you, and then you actually took the necessary action steps. And that's such a critical component, no matter what we're looking at in life or business. And as you eloquently stated, we can't just think our way into something. We have to start with the idea. We have to start to ruminate on it. We have to think about it. But then we also have to actually put yep. the plans in motion and allow that amazing magical component being momentum to start to take over. And so it's it's an incredible story. I'm, I'm curious when you, if we were to think back before watching that DVD on that, on that particular day, what story were you telling yourself about yourself? What was the mindset at that point? Honestly, I feel like I was just in the mindset that all my problems were other people's fault. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything about it. I was helpless. You know, and I was like, Oh, my, my weight, that's, you know, my parents' fault for the way that they, they brought me up or the way that they fed me or 
um, you know, my, my relationships, that's the other person's fault or my, my debt, you know, that's, you know, whatever's fault because, you know, again, probably like my, my parents that they, they raised me, they didn't teach me what I needed to teach. So being in that victim mindset was really screwing me up. Like that was, you know, you can't be a victim and also be the hero of the movie. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a great Joe Rogan clip that's out all over social media where he's talking about being the hero of your own movie and you can't be the victim and the hero at the same time. So if you're going to step up and that being said, being the hero of your own movie, doesn't mean you can't ask for help. You know, like that's, that's important too. Like I had to seek mentors and I had to seek people that were achieving things that I wanted to achieve so that I could learn from them and get there. But I had to let all that ego go. Hmm. And I had to let all that, blaming everyone else go say, okay, this is up to me, but it's up to me to find the right people to surround myself with that can help me, you know, shorten that learning curve and actually get where I want to be. And that's where I was just on this quest for knowledge. Like I'm digging into, you know, Tony Robbins stuff and, you know, T Harv Ecker and like all these like personal development people. I'm just, I can't get enough. Like I'm reading two or three books a week. This is before audio books. I have to actually read real books, you know, and uh, like, you know, unless you have the CV, the CDs going in your car. And like, I, I did that too. I'm like, I gotta go drive around some more so I can listen to more CDs. So I didn't have an actual CD player just in my car. Uh, so like, I was just, it was like the light switch got turned on and I was in the hallway before, but it was dark. I couldn't see what doors were open and which ones were closed. Mm -hmm. But just that little dose of hope flipped that light switch on. And, I, and I'm like, all right, I, I see opportunity for the first time where before I was just walking around with my, my eyes closed, basically. Yeah, I love the way you articulate that because the, the opportunities and the potential for growth was always there. It's just that the light wasn't on. So you're walking around that that hallway as you describe not being able to see the doors but the doors are there so the the hope is there it's changing the belief structure it's changing the storyline it's changing how we see ourselves and being able to see a different version being able to see a future state yeah. and i i wanted you to I asked that question for a specific reason because I wanted to understand how you how you viewed yourself because when it came to you taking your transformational journey it's one thing for you to go through that which is powerful enough in and of itself but then to be able to to take that and share that with an entire town and see the kind of impact that you had over a period of time what was the what was the catalyst for that change to happen for a, a much larger group of individuals and and the reason that i want you to dig into that a bit is because in my experience in order for us to to be able to to change something on the outside to change our circumstances to change our our body to be able to change outcomes we have to first start by changing what's on the inside and when it's you doing that when you're in control of that that's something that is is manageable but now let's take that to affecting that type of change on a much larger audience. So walk us through that. How, how did that process begin? Well, I think that for a lot of like, especially beginning entrepreneurs, this is an important question because the easiest way to become an entrepreneur is to take our own life experiences and turn that into a business, our own life expertise. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're experts in how we've lived our lives. Like we've been doing it all of our life. So like if, and you know, people like Gary Vee talk about this all the time. Like if you have a passion about a certain hobby or whatever, you just totally nerd out over that, that could potentially be a business for you. So for me, it was a natural progression. And again, like this is another process that I teach that I call the transformation timeline. And I feel like this is for anybody that's going through a large transformative journey, whether it's weight loss or getting out of debt or 
you know, anything with their relationships, if you go through a major journey at the tail end of it, there's this phase that I call new purpose, new identity. And if you miss out on that, then that's when backsliding happens. That's when you start smoking cigarettes again. That's when you uh, get back to eating like you aren't supposed to. That's when the bad habits pull back. So new purpose, new identity is when you go, all right, I've, I'm at the tail end of this journey. What does the next leg of this journey, what does that look like? And also what's going to keep me going? What's going to keep the why bigger than all the why nots? So for me, that and my entrepreneurial spirit, like I've always had that, that kicks in. I'm like, I want to help people do what I, what I've done. They're already asking for it. You know, now I just have to figure out how do I communicate that? Like, how do I, cause like you said, it's different. I mean, I can control my variables when I make that decision, teaching someone else, especially when it's something like weight loss and you're talking about habits that have been formed over a lifetime and I'm 25 and I'm helping people that are twice my age that are like, you know, like that are my parents' friends, you know, like from my hometown. And they know me as the kid that play, their kid played basketball with. There's a lot wrapped up into that. And I'm like, all right, I have to be able to communicate to these people. So what I did initially, I recruited 13 people, like handpicked that I knew would listen to me. And I, and I gave them one heck of a deal for my little boot camp program. And I'm like, all I need is eight weeks. I'm going to change your life. And then you're going to go out and tell everyone you know about it. Because I was confident. I was like, I knew I had it dialed in. I'd already tested it with a few people. I'd already helped a couple people lose over hundred pounds, some major weight. So this is my first like boot camp, And we went in and we did a little, you know, all the before and after pictures, everybody crushed it. I think we ended up doing like 300 something pounds out of that boot camp. Like everybody's dropping 30, 40, 50 pounds in eight weeks. Like it's really crushing. And then I had all these before and after pictures that gave me all the credibility to go to all these people that I already knew that, like, that know me as the kid that grew up with their kid. And I said, check this out, check out what I did with these people. And then people just started going, when's the next one? When's the next one? So the second boot camp, 30 people, the next one, 50, the next one, 80, and then 100, 100, 100. Every boot camp, every eight weeks, 100. You know, and for me, I had more money rolling in than I'd ever seen in my life. I was like, I didn't even have to, like, this is before like automated, uh, like, all, like I can't just direct deposit in the bank. I've got a wallet full of checks. I didn't even have a bank bag. <laughs> I just got a wallet full of checks. Look like I just robbed somebody or something. And it like in the first year, it just exploded. And I'm doing these events where there's 100, 200 people packing in to hear me speak. And like 6 a.m., we open up this 8,000 square foot facility. I've got 100, 150 people there with three different exercise rooms. And they just want to hear me talk to like kick it off. Like it's, it was nuts, Jay. And um, like it, it, it just happened so fast. But the key was like with coaching, especially inside of fitness, I tell people, I'm like, if you go on a website and all you see is that experts before and afters, and that's all the before and afters that you see, that's the only results, beware. Like if they're in great shape, that's cool but you have to be able to connect your knowledge and teach other people and get them to adapt what you're teaching them or it's worthless. Uh -huh. So you want to see walls of before and after. So in my studio, I wallpapered it with all my before and afters. We got 8,000 square feet and it is full of transformation pictures from people from my hometown. They can walk around and go, Oh, I know them. I know them. I know them. And uh, yeah, that that's what really made it take off. Love that. Best testimonials ever. Yeah. Ever. That, that's phenomenal. So how much of that transformational work is time spent in the mental gym versus the, the physical actually lifting and going through that regimen? So kind of break it down if you can between the, the mental piece, the physical piece, and the nutritional piece. Yeah. Uh, this is one of my favorite topics to tackle because I like to kind of flip it on its ear. When I first start working with somebody, the first thing we attack is a mental piece that I call your transformation danger zones. So I look at the typical weight loss or transformation cycle, like a, a circle that I call the black hole of weight loss doom, uh, you know, doom, doom, doom. So yes, it's, it's epic. So I want you to imagine four interconnected 
uh, lines that create a circle. So the top of the circles, you start something new, you, you get a trainer, you start CrossFit, you do yoga, Weight Watchers, whatever. I don't care what it is. You start something mm -hmm. new. You get some initial results. That's the second arrow because it's a new stimulus, new stimulus, new results, new excitement, new years, you're fired up. Bottom of the circle, life happens. We weren't ready for that. Next arrow that connects to the top, crash and burn, go back where we started. This is the typical cycle, usually starting in January that the average person goes through. And around and around we go and they just say, that's just, I'm the person that's always trying to get healthy. I'm the person that's always trying to lose weight. And they end up blaming that thing at the top. Oh, CrossFit didn't work. Yoga didn't work. My trainer didn't work. Weight Watchers didn't work. But what didn't work was we weren't ready for that bottom part when life happens. When you got sick, you got injured, you took a vacation, you lost your workout partner, you had no accountability, you know, anything, you know, you, a relationship change, work, sh work shift change, kids go from in school to out of school, e-learning, you weren't ready and you lose all the momentum and you crash and burn and go back to where you started. So that's where we start. And that's the mental piece. We go, okay, we got to identify, analyze and prepare ahead for that, those major transformation danger zones. So we just start with a simple 28 day program. I go, all right, for the next 28 days, let's look ahead and find where those, tr those transformation danger zones are at. We identify them. Okay. Then we analyze them. We go, okay, going on vacation. All right. Normally, you know, maybe they gain weight, they, they do good and then they gain some weight on vacation and then they don't get back into their habits post vacation. So that's kind of the analysis. Then we plan ahead and we go, all right, what I want you to do, book all your personal training sessions before you leave, you know, order your groceries before you leave. You and I are going to get committed on your, what days you're working out and what nutrition program you're on before you leave. That way, when you get back, I don't care how much weight you gain, you only gain so much weight on vacation, you know, but when you get back, what really kills you, if you don't get back into the habits for three months, that's when we put on 30 pounds right there. So that's a good example of like, that's the bulk of it. And that's why I coach people from all different nutrition styles, all different fitness styles. I've got clients that are, you know, strict carnivore. I got clients that are weight watchers. I got clients that are high carb, low carb, you know, vegetarian all across the board. We take care of the danger zone thing. That's 90% of it, Jay. Like that's yeah. just, how are we screwing this up over and over and over again? It's a hole in the road. Let's, let's build a bridge over the hole instead of just, you know, get out your bike, ride the bike into the hole. You know, okay, maybe I'll just run into the hole. Maybe I'll, you know, drive my car right into the hole. Like, let's fix the hole so we can get to the other side. That's all about that story that you're telling yourself. What's that that movie reel that's happening inside your head? And if you're like, well, I'm the fat person that's always trying to lose weight, guess what? That, I mean, that's, that's what's going to be delivered in, in your life. And our self-talk, especially when it comes to the areas that really impact our self-confidence, like our image, like our body, like that just can wreak havoc on our mental state. And then that spreads like a virus into other areas. And that's what I was experiencing back in 2007. I had zero confidence. You want me to go up and talk to a girl? Hell no. Like that's, that's not happening. You know, like no way I'm scared to death. You know, and I, that's why I was, I wasn't confident in my, my, entrepreneurial decisions. I wasn't uh, just zero confidence, but it all spurred from not feeling like I'm confident in how I just show up in the world. And I mean, it's huge. It's a huge deal. And that's like, eventually, if you're out there listening and you're like, my momentum is just trash right now. It's really going the wrong direction. A key step is just putting your dang foot in the ground, digging in and saying no more. Like, no more backsliding. If, if you need to change your momentum, the first step is stopping the negative slide. And then mm -hmm. we have to start to build positive momentum. It's not like you just snap your fingers and go, I'm in amazing momentum now, ignite. Like you stop the backslide, you kind of recoil a little bit, and then we start to push forward and then we build. And that's that last phase is that's when you get to thrive, but there's a, an energy transfer in there, but it starts between your ears and just like you said, like you have to start telling yourself a different story, start playing a different movie. And that's where my affirmations came in big time where like my, with my weight loss goals, with my money goals, I had to put myself mentally in the end result. I would play that movie over and over for five years. That's the movie that was rolling in my head. Not all the things that were happening wrong. I was like, this is where I'm taking 
action towards every single day. Not there yet, but I'm a little bit closer today than I was yesterday. That's for darn sure. And yeah. just 1% better, 1% better. And you saw all the change that happened in five years. Yeah, that point right there is one that I want to make sure that we are highlighting and amplifying. And that's the 1% better. So what I'm hearing you say is it's about the incremental gain. So although I may be at this starting point, right, and I want to get here, in order for me to achieve that, I'm going to set very specific incremental daily goals, weekly goals, monthly goals, quarterly goals, and obviously not try to achieve this significant milestone overnight because I'm just going to derail myself. But if I'm taking the right actions every single day, those incremental 1% gains, when you look at that through the right optics over a long enough timeline, look at how far you've come and be able to celebrate that success. Yeah. And um, you just sparked a memory in, in my my brain zone here about uh, a conversation that I had with Michael Hyatt. Like Michael Hyatt is one of my favorite authors. Uh, I've had the pleasure of interviewing him. I've had the pleasure of, of having lunch with him and his daughter, Megan, and like having conversations. And he's somebody I really look up to. And from him, I learned about the, the difference, especially for people like me. I'm very competitive and I'm willing to take personal responsibility, but sometimes I take that too far and I put a little pressure on, on myself. So what he taught me about achievement-based goals versus habit-based goals, that changed the game for me because I feel like a lot of us get stuck. And it, well, let's first, let's define these. An achievement-based goal is like, I lost a hundred pounds. You cross that finish line, all right? A habit-based goal is what do I do daily to get to the achievement goal? Those are the stepping stones. Those are the action-based goals. So Let's put it in sports analogy. Uh, the Chicago Bulls want to win the NBA championship. That's an achievement goal. So every player is going to shoot a thousand shots every single day. That's a habit goal. So what are you doing to create the stepping stones to get to the achievement goal? The issue with a lot of guys, especially all we have are achievement goals and we're never there. And it's, it's always this mindset of not there yet. And that messes with us and we give up because we, if you, if you experience failure daily for a long enough time, it's like, oh, I've, I've got to lose 100 pounds. I'm down 20, not at 100, not there yet. Not there, 40, but not at 100, 50, not, mm -hmm. and then eventually, boom, give up. That's, that's, you see that as failure every single time. Whereas my, I had my achievement goal out there, but th with my affirmations, I would create habit-based goals of I'm going to sweat every day. I can check off that check box every day. That's a habit goal. I'm going to drink, you know, 120 ounces of water every day. I can check off that check, check box every day. Uh, I'm going to say my affirmations every day. I'm going to look for one business connection every day. Those are habit goals that I can win every single day. And that was what I was way more concerned with. And I knew that I did enough. If I, if I were to do enough of those, the stepping stones, I'm getting closer and closer and boom, those big achievement goals happen. Love that. You do that every day. The outcome will take care of itself. Yes. Yes. That's what we focus on. I, I love that. I'm so glad that you that you took the time to unpack that <laughs> and share that with us. I think that's fantastic. So I, I want to switch gears here for a moment, although this all ties together. But let's talk about the world of podcasting because you have been able to create an entire business around being a full-time podcaster and... Not only do you have one top-rated podcast, you actually have two top-rated podcasts and possibly more that I'm not aware of. But speak to how you got into the world of podcasting and how you've been able to turn that into a full-time career and a thriving business. Yeah, man. I'm always happy to talk about podcasting, Jay. You know this. So... When the boot camp thing really blew up, all my business mentors and people locally are in my ear going, franchise, franchise, franchise. And I'm just like, I wasn't into it. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to be in charge of that many people. 
I'm not a huge fan of being in charge of a bunch of people, Jay. Like, I don't know if you know that about me, but it's just like, that doesn't really appeal to me. Um, or like, I just, it just didn't sound like something that I wanted to do. But then eventually podcasting started to come around because I was all about more impact. I'm like streamlined effort, easy to do. Let's help as many people as possible. So when podcasting came around, I was like this, I tried blogging. I'm not a big writer talking. Oh yeah. Let's, let's go flip that mic on. So I, I, I dove into podcasting the weight loss space with the mindset of let's teach the world what I have been teaching my, my hometown. Like I helped my hometown. My, 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 I had the story, the, the, the show million pound mission. So I'm, I'm on the million pound mission. My name is Adam, the PhD, the previously heavy dude. I lost over hundred pounds. I helped my hometown lose 35,000 pounds. Now we're on a million pound mission and listeners would apply the knowledge that I teach or my guests teach. They would, I had a spot on my website where they could go in and uh, donate their weight loss and the ticker, we had the whole ticker thing going <laughs> and we're building towards a million pounds. And, uh, you know, that was my initial surge into the podcasting space. And it was, you know, there was a learning curve at first. Uh, I had to figure it out the first year, as is with a lot of podcasts, it was a little rough. I thought about quitting a lot of times. I, another mentor, Brennan Burchard, like one of the things I learned from him was commit to 52 episodes, one episode a week for a year and map out your content for the whole first year and don't quit. No, you'll want to quit. Don't quit. You just got to keep showing up. You got to show your audience that, especially in the self-help space, <laughs> you can't be spotty with how you show up. Like these people are looking for their person, their tribe. And if you're like, well, I'll podcast once and then maybe three weeks later and then seven weeks later and then whenever I feel like it and then do seven episodes in a row, like you got to be consistent in the weight loss, health, coaching, self-help space so that your audience is like, yeah, I'm showing up for this guy. He's showing up for me. So I, I did that. Didn't quit. Um, now we're five years into it. Uh, I've got three shows, 600 plus episodes, you know, I've got the health show. And then I started the second show podcasting business school, which you have been an amazing guest for Jay. And like, it's, I'm really proud of that. Having two top ranked shows on Apple podcasts in two completely different categories. There's not a lot of podcasters that have been able to pull that off. They've tried like, you know, I love me some John Lee Dumas, like <laughs> entrepreneurs on fire. Amazing. But let me tell you, JLD a couple of years ago, I tried to start this like history podcast and it, sucked it was one of the worst things ever like i'm like hmm. dude entrepreneurs on fire you're the best but he's trying to do this hardcore history thing where he's he's like retelling history i'm like ah not not great not great jld i love you bro i love you not great um so i know it's hard to pull off if somebody at that level had a hard time pulling it off i'm like all right but it's the same formula like i've been on a podcasting journey i've been able to help a lot of people i've been able to monetize in different ways so I was like, I'm going to teach this on another show. I'm passionate about it. I like to nerd out over. I love to learn from people like Jay uh, about his expertise in the field. So it's really taken off. It's kind of a niche down, tighter show, but I, I just love it. And now I'm out there helping podcasters create businesses around their shows and go from like part-time to, to, you know, you know, successful side hustle or successful side hustle to full-time. And that's super cool, man. It, it truly is. And when when we were together on your show, we had our conversation had a lot to do with the podcasting business and attracting the right type of listeners and engagement, all those amazing things. And I'll just share this since we're we're talking about this at the moment. Being able to create one podcast and being able to create the number of episodes that you did in one year, right? An episode a week. That in and of itself is a, a major accomplishment. I mean, you look at the number of podcasts that are available today, and there are, I, I don't, you would probably know the count. I have no idea, but I know it is a, the, the number is tremendous. But the number of podcasts that start that end after three or four episodes is a significant percentage. There's yeah. a lot of podcasters that jump into it because it seems like it's a relatively easy point of entry. And realistically, if you're looking at equipment, 
you know, you could get a, uh, uh, you could use your computer mic, you could use a, a headset mic, and you don't even have to have a camera. You can record yep. your voice. So you can create one, but you hit on something that's incredibly important, and that is consistency, right? We're creatures of habit. So if I'm going to listen to your show and I like your content and I connect with you as an individual, I like your personality, I like the way you speak, I like the way you make me feel, the content is good, it's relevant. And if I know that your show is released every Wednesday, there, over time there's an expectation. It becomes a habit for me. I know your episode's going to be released on Wednesdays or whatever that day is, and I expect that. And the moment you break that, it's almost as if you've broken trust, right? And to try to earn that back is very, very challenging. So consistency is key in making sure that you are delivering good content that fills a need in the market. And you're clearly doing that. And to do that more than once really is incredible. And <laughs> I, I love what you're doing. And I loved being on your podcast. It's, you, you've, you have amazing guests. And the format is incredible. Thank you, Jay. And one of the things I'm really excited about in the podcasting space that if, I know there's some people out there that may be a little pod curious, like they're thinking about it, you know, and, and we may have scared them a little bit with this consistency thing, but I know there's a lot of marketers and entrepreneurs out there that are big into their email list and they're big into their social media. The podcast, in my opinion, is the last connection point between you and your audience that is 100% deliverability. So, when somebody hits subscribe, which is changing to follow, by the way, an Apple podcast, um, when they hit that button, it shows up on their phone every time you put out an episode, every time. And they get that little notification, new episode of podcasting business school, every time. Email, we're high five. And if we get 30% open rate, Facebook, 6%. Yeah. You know, like it's terrible. So like, that's why I'm so into this. Cause I'm a, I'm a community builder. I'm a, I'm a community engagement builder. And I know, like, I can see it in the downloads. Like, I put out an episode, it's hitting the earbuds. And that, to me, as somebody that earns a living by building communities, that's gold. And that's why I'm operating this space, and I'm trying to blow it up as big as I can. Yeah, I think that's, that's so important. And I spend a lot of time, Adam, talking about the customer experience and the customer journey. And I know that the approach that you take and everything that you put into what you create is focused on creating an outstanding customer experience, which, which I absolutely love. It's not about you, you and you love what you do, but it's really about what you deliver, right? It's about the experience that you deliver. And when you're able to connect with someone on an emotional level, when you're able to deliver something that is creating some sort of transformation, whether it's health related, whether it's business related, life related, whatever that happens to be, and you're the one delivering that, that's very powerful. And that is, you know, that's a, that's a big obligation. It truly is. Once you start that, to be able to continue it and invest everything you've got into delivering that on a consistent basis, that's, that's, that's huge. That's yeah. huge. And, yeah. and you're doing that. So yeah. I just want to let you know how much I appreciate what you're delivering and the approach that you take and your professionalism to it. And I, and I love it because you continue to raise the bar. So for, for people like me, who are constantly wanting to learn and to improve and to hone their skills, I can stand in the shadows and look up to you and say, you know what? This is the direction that I want to go. This is someone that I can learn from. So excellent. Well, thank you, Jay. That, that means a lot coming from you, man. I appreciate that. For sure. So, so tell me, what are your non-negotiables right now in life? Great question, Jay. To me, well, as you know, I, I took a recent trip to the hospital, had a little health scare. So that, that resets the whole filter uh, of my life and everything's all good. But like, I've got a kindergarten daughter, I've got a fourth grade son, I've got a wife and like non-negotiables are when the plate is full, we don't add 
something else to the plate without taking something else off first. Otherwise, everything starts to spill. You can look at like, like let's do the fill the cup analogy. I have to make sure my cup is full, but not spilling over, not empty. I have to make sure my family's cup is full, not spilling over, not empty. I have to make sure my community and clients' cup is full, not spilling over, not empty. Like there's a, a balancing act there. So when Clubhouse is blowing up and all the podcasters are on Clubhouse and I'm getting invited to be on Clubhouse 12 times a week and I'm saying no 100% of the time because what I'm doing is currently working. It's that enough versus more. Right now, more kind of depreciates the asset of everything else that I've got going. More takes away from everything else at this point because what, is, what everything else is is working. So the money is good. The relationships are good. You know, the, the health is good. Now we've got, you know, that whole situation figured out. So to me, that's the biggest non-negotiable is you have to be aware of those assets of where you're spending your time. And I cannot just succumb to the fear of missing out when something new and shiny pops in. I've got to be aware of, okay, I can do clubhouse, but then I don't get to put my, my kid to bed. How's that impact my relationship with him? with her like that's a big deal so that is the the big thing that i'm focused on right now especially good love it definitely sounds like you've got your priorities in the right places trying <laughs> yeah fantastic you know i i go back when i hear you you talk about this i go back to the overall theme of the book essentialism about doing less but better. Better, yes, I love that book. And absolutely, and it and I I've heard you talk about, and you and I had a conversation in the past about minimalism, and it just all ties together. And really understanding what the real priorities are, and being okay with using the power of saying no. So before we wrap up. Where can we go to connect with you and be able to consume your content and be able to download your incredible podcasts? Yeah, Jay. Uh, well, if you're interested in the the business of podcasting world, you can go to podcastingbusiness.school. I'm also at Podcasting Business School on Instagram. And I've niched down my health show. I, I found that about 90% of my audience and my clients were coming in the low-carb space. So I double niche down into the low-carb space within weight loss. So the uh, low carb hustle podcast.com is where you can find all that. And we talk a little bit of entrepreneurship in that one too, which I like. Uh, I always try to tie that in a little bit. So those are the two hubs. And uh, I would be really excited to interact with any of you that pop into my world. Make sure that you mentioned that you heard me on Jay's show. And I will welcome you with open arms. All right. And I know that you will. Fantastic. So <laughs> here is my final question to you. What are you, you know, I'm going to ask you a different question. I, I, I had one in mind, but I want to uh, go pivot. in a slightly different direction. So if that's okay with you, since you are in the podcast space, you've mentioned a couple of names already, some high profile names. Who is the one guest that you are going to have on your podcast there they haven't been scheduled yet but they are on the top of your list but they are going to be coming on well it's interesting because it's it's somebody that has ties in the weight loss and business space kind of like i do they have a, a story in both the feet in both both sides there and your audience may or may not recognize them but it's amy porterfield amy porterfield is an online marketer and she's got a giant podcast. She is like my Shiro podcast. She is my podcast Oprah because she's got this weight loss journey that that she talks about every once in a while, which I, I that's why I want to interview her because I want to talk about that. And she doesn't talk about that on shows very much, but totally inspirational. Uh, but she's an amazing, amazing entrepreneur, marketer. I love everything that she does with her show. I buy everything that she sells. Like, like if there was podcast prom, I would, I'd be like, Amy, we go to podcast prom with me. Uh, <laughs> like that's, that's, uh, and I've interviewed like, like Michael Hyatt is, is one of her mentors. And I'm like, Michael, can you get me an intro to Amy? He's like, I'll, I'll see what I can do. And I, it hasn't happened yet. Um, uh, but you know, I'm, I'm in her world and I know what's going to happen. But uh, yeah, that's, that's the one that I would really nerd out over is Amy Porterfield. 
Fantastic. Well, we're, we're just going to add the word yet on the end of it hasn't happened yet because yes. we know it's going to, right? You've you put it out there. You're surrounding yourself with the right people who have the connections and you know you can deliver an amazing experience for her. So oh, yeah. I look forward to listening to that episode. And when I come in contact with her, I know I'm going to be directing her to you. Oh. Dude, I'll drive straight to your house and give you a big old hug, man. Like that That's thats a guarantee right there. I'm counting on it. <laughs> All right, my friend. Well, thank you so much, Adam, for joining us on Business Minds Coffee Chat. I, I just am so incredibly grateful for you. I'm, I'm blessed that you've come into my world, and I love learning from you. I love having these conversations, man, and thank you again so very much. Thank you, Jay. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And just so you know, you're in the right place. Stay tuned, hit that subscribe button, and just keep on digging into what Jay provides. All right, we'll see you. How about that? Couldn't say it any better. The only thing I'm going to add is, again, thank you all for watching and listening. And you heard what Adam said. Go ahead and subscribe, rate, leave us a comment. Let us know what you thought about this episode. Share one or two key takeaways that resonated with you. We would love that. And to enjoy more episodes and to learn how J. Shear Business Consulting can help build a solid foundation for your service-based business, all you have to do is visit jshearbusinessconsulting.com. And until next time, keep learning and growing. Please make a point to visit Adam's website. Check out all the incredible things that he's doing. And we'll see you on the next Business Minds Coffee Chat. Take care. Jay. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Business Consultant. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Business Consulting.